Hey everyone, welcome back to Financial Freedom Friday. Nate here again, it's great to be with you. We'll discuss some tips and strategies to help you find financial freedom. Today, it's it's tax season, it's April, things are coming to a close on your taxes, so I thought it might be a decent time to talk about uh, taxes. They, they are very important in uh, your, your building wealth, determining how whatever you invest in is going to be taxed, what makes the most sense, thinking about it holistically. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna bring up the three uh, main ways that your investments will most likely be taxed as you're trying to build financial freedom. And also just encouraging you to focus on the big picture instead of the here and now at times, which can be hard. But we're gonna start with the three uh, types of taxing that can be done. There's, there's things called taxable accounts, there's things called tax deferred accounts, and tax free accounts. And they all have their little benefits, you could say for the most part. Uh, and some of the disadvantages. So we'll start with just the, the basic thing called a taxable account. That'd be like a, a brokerage account or you go out and buy stocks or bonds or uh, mutual funds just on your own outside of a plan. Just go out and, you know, to Ed Jones and, and buy something. Uh, and taxable accounts, they are they're called taxable because the whole thing is taxable. Uh, you don't get a deduction whenever you buy into a, a taxable account, like buying $10,000 of mutual funds or whatever. And you also are going to have to pay taxes when, on the gains that you make whenever you sell the asset. So that, that's a taxable account. There's not a ton of tax break involved in that. The next one will be the tax deferred account. Those are, are things like your 401k and your IRA, things of that nature, where it's called tax deferred because as we contribute money to those programs, we don't have to pay taxes on that money in the year that we contribute. So if I contribute 10,000 to my 401k or my IRA or something like that, then I actually pay taxes this year on $10,000 less than I would have, than I would have had I not contributed. It's also tax deferred in that we don't pay taxes on any of the growth in, until uh, we start pulling it out. But that's kind of the issue with the tax deferred account is that when we come time to pull money from those accounts, then we have to pay regular income tax on 100% of every distribution that we take. The taxable account, we only pay taxes on the gains at that point. Uh, the tax deferred account, we have to, every single time we pull money out, we have to pay taxes on that. But we haven't had to pay taxes on anything that's been in there up to that point, which is nice. Uh, the tax-free accounts are more like the Roth IRA and whole life insurance and things of that nature are what's, what you would call tax-free Maybe even you can throw in municipal bonds in there or something like that. But those are where you, you put in after-tax dollars so you don't get a tax deduction for contributing. Um, but whenever it comes time to pull money from it, we don't have to pay taxes on all the withdrawals and distributions we want to take. So we don't, we're not deferring the tax to a later date and then pulling from it and, and getting taxed at that point. This is we pay taxes now. We let it grow, we don't pay taxes on any of the growth, and then we pull money from it whenever we'd like to, and we don't pay taxes you know, for retirement or whatever you'd like. So those are the three main ones that, that you'll run into. And many accountants at this time year point people towards that tax deferred quadrant of, of taxes because they say, hey, look at all the taxes you're gonna have to pay. You ought to come put some money into this IRA, open one up, so you can reduce your tax liability. They think that's the greatest thing since sliced bread for whatever reason. And, and, it, and it, it's, it, can make, it can make sense for some people, but in reality, it really is just kind of kicking the can down the road. So, sir, we get a tax break today, which is really what an accountant is typically focused on, how to save you on taxes today. Uh, but we do know it's, it's not like we have gotten a real tax cut in that we will have to pay tax on that money. Maybe not now, but in the future we will. Or whenever we die and our kids get it and they pull money, they'll have to pay tax. Somebody's going to have to pay the tax at some point. And so the accountant's not helping you reduce it, he's just helping you kick it down the road and hoping that maybe you'll be paying lower taxes in the future, which I'm not a huge uh, believer that taxes are really gonna go down with the way that the debt is racking up at, in the US. So the key is to actually try to reduce taxes overall. Uh, get into the tax-free environment is really helpful for a lot of people. Get rid of, of the tax and, and have some control over it because we don't know what tax rates will be in the future, but if we can get into a place that's tax-free, it really is helpful. Um, one thing I didn't really throw in there is that real estate uh, is taxed, and it's kind of a hybrid of all this because of it allows you to take this depreciation thing. So you can actually get some tax breaks when you buy real estate 
um, to, because of the depreciation of the asset. That even though it can be growing and making money and producing rents, you may not have to pay taxes on very much of it, if any. Some people even have a loss on the books because they're able to depreciate it over time. So it's kind of a hybrid of it. It's, it's after-tax money, but there's these real tax uh, you know, expenses involved with it that can reduce taxes, which is nice. However, once again, um, when you sell the asset, if you've depreciated the whole thing, then essentially all you've done is you've gotten all the tax breaks up here and then we had to pay taxes on all the money we should have been in the first place all that time. But what's nice about the real estate is that you have these things called the 1031 exchange. So if you sell a property that you've been depreciating and you have all these gains, uh, you can move that into another property without paying taxes on that gains. But the nicest thing I in my mind about it is that it also lets you, uh, whenever you pass away, it gets a stepped up basis. And what that means is when you pass away your heirs, even if you depreciated the whole thing, um, but you kept it the whole time and there's no, no value on the books because we depreciated it all, um, at the, upon death, typically, there's a stepped up basis that your children can take ownership of it and, and get basis in the property up at whatever the value was upon your death. So there, there is ways to avoid paying a huge tax bill when you sell it by doing the 1031 exchange um, or just by not selling and taking rental income and leaving it to somebody else to sell it. And that way you can avoid the tax. I hope this was helpful to you, distinguishing everything. As I said, it's very important to know how you'll be taxed when you're investing because that's a big deal on, on which one to choose. And maybe it's good to have a few of those accounts in different areas so you can kind of compare and contrast how you like to be taxed, if you would. Uh, but anyway, this has been Financial Freedom Friday. I would love to have you back next week. We'll come back and talk about more tips and strategies to help you find financial freedom. If you don't build it, nobody will do it for you. So let's get to work, and I will see you next Friday.